socks and designer tags. <laughs> And go. <laughs> Hello, you guys. Oh my gosh. Today we are talking about Andre Leon Talley, former, former editor in chief, well, editor in chief, former um, creative director and editor. And girl, he's getting kicked the fuck out of his house. He's about to be homeless and with his Uggs. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're so cruel. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's actually really not funny because it's unfortunate because we also have to keep in mind before we start the story, he's 71, older. Oh no, I think he's 77, hun. 77? 77. Yeah, 77. Are yeah. you sure? Let me let me look. I still got the New York Times article up. 72, I'm sorry. So you're, you're yeah. Right. I was like, no, not 77, girl. I think I read yeah. from our 77, but 72 is right. Yeah. Yeah. 72 has they're saying he has health issues. One would imagine because it's weight. We don't know for sure, but they say health issues. So it is fucked up to be kicking a man out of his home that old and with health issues. So we'll start with saying that. But I am very of the school of get your paperwork straight, get your signature straight, get your money straight. Best book I ever read was a book called Girl, Get Your Money Straight. <laughs> yes, that's, that's Andre true. Andre really needed to read because Andre, um, since 2004, has been living in an 11 room white colonial uh, mansion in White Plains. And if you're not familiar with New York City, that is a suburb of New York City that you can get to on the Metro North. So it'd be similar from going to like, basically where I live in Menlo Park to where Ronald lives in San Francisco. It's about the same distance. So um, he was renting the house from George McLemus, who was the former head of Melano Bolanic USA, who he is known for a little over 30 years as well as his partners involved, George, George's partners involved. And his name is Anthony Yorgatis. So lots of Greeks in the mix. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so here's where it gets messy. And this is why I am saying to the gays watching this program, make sure you have everything in writing. <laughs> yes, because what he did was a what's called a gentleman's contract, which is a verbal agreement, handshake, yeah. all that. Old school, 1965, Old school. when you rented a room in the Greenwich Village, <laughs> no contract. Yes. All right. So and the so they had to pay for it because he went through bankruptcy. Yes. And when you go through bankruptcy, yeah, you so can't rent homes. Andre right? filed for bankruptcy three times. Even most people who file for bankruptcy once in their lifetime, it's very, very damaging to your credit score and just to overall, like you can't rent an apartment, you can't buy a house or a condo, you cannot buy a car and, you know, it'd be very difficult even to get a job, you know, filing a bankruptcy. So Trump, for example, has filed bankruptcy many, many times for his businesses. So, mm -hmm. but Andre has filed bankruptcy in 97 and 98 in North Carolina and 93 in New York City, which bankruptcy in New York City really is no joke whatsoever. You can't even get an apartment if you file bankruptcy in New York. Yes. So, so many, since he had all those bankruptcies, yeah. couldn't buy his own home. Yeah, so many times Condé Nast, his employer for many years, has bailed him out or, and also in that kind of editor lifestyle, there's always kind of a friend who, you know, can get you out of this situation because it's really all about keeping up appearances, keeping up with your brand as editor. And so, they were good Judy's. That was his sister. Yeah, like they that, were, that, that was, mm -hmm. it's almost like you doing it for me or something like that was his homie. That was right, his girl. Exactly. <laughs> so, and also we have to remember that in 2004, Andre was still the king of Vogue. He was still the contributing editor at this time. He was no longer the creative director as Ronald mentioned, but he still had a very influential um, style facts column where he would report on the shows. And mm -hmm. I remember, you know, that was the time where I was first starting out at editing and Milona Bolonic was every other sentence of that column. So, and even to the credits of Andre's, you know, few sittings he did at the time with like Renee Zellweger, yeah. um, Milano. I mean, yeah, and that's another, thing to, that's another good thing to note yeah. too. Like he was so influential. It was just yeah. kind of like, so, he asked you to do it. 
and at the time, you know, in 04, this house probably cost about like a million in cash, you know, mm -hmm. um, it really was kind of like a drop in the bucket. And Manolo's back then, it was during the time of Sex in the City, and that same Dirk, um, is, he's now taken over for SJP's line, so... Yes. Very, it was very during the time where that was big so very very a, a million wasn't a big deal back then huh even though it was a post september 11th world people were still sky high i mean the budgets were yeah. sky high people were riding high people were still buying stuff it wasn't like the social media sort of contemporary fashion you know fashion nova you know world we live in now it was just very different mm -hmm. so the lease that um andre had signed in 2014 expired in 2014 and was never re-signed by any of the parties and so this recently is this march the couple had asked andre to leave the house and he refused he just outright refused and said no it's a little cloudy what happened over the summer with legalities but basically in november of 2020 um moose and Yurgatis um basically gave Andre an eviction notice, like a legal eviction notice. Now here's where- Get out and take your Uggs with you. Yeah. <laughs> and he used that house for his uh, one of his uh, campaigns recently. So I know. I saw, honestly, that's a cute, it's a cute campaign because he's kind of serving what he yeah. could sitting down. Yeah, it's a cute house. It's very kind of like Martha Stewart light, mm -hmm. you know, it's very- But what I will house. say is, well, A, if you have <laughs> three bankruptcies do you need an 11 million dollars million dollar home i mean 11 bedroom home but also too just like do you really need an 11 bedroom house period though yeah. like i just like i just i don't feel like i would want something that big yeah. like i am of the school of keep everything low cost because you're going to need cash at a later date that's what i'm saying too so i would i don't think i would want something that big like i mean i get it because it's a good way to flex and he does have parties and shit but at the same time i mean there's nothing wrong with a cute four bedroom home yeah i'll, I'll give you some full transparency right now so the apartment that i am sitting in currently from this video cost fourteen hundred dollars a month andre leon tally's landscaping bill for oh, yeah. this property is $1,400 a month. Now, as we've kind of gotten to Andre's financials over the past few years, we have learned that he is being paid $500 for the Vogue podcast, as well as his kind of hosting duties at the Met or whatever special event Vogue. And that's disrespectful. And yeah. it's, how do you give someone $500 for that? I mean, we make $500 a day on like a photo shoot, you know? So, and it's like, this is a legend. This is an icon, you know? So um, that's- how, more than that. How, how are you going to be paying $1,400 a month for landscaping, hosting a once a week podcast at $500 a month. I mean, there just is a time, I get the grandiosity because we all respect yeah. to it and that's why we love the Vogue editor. Yeah. But there comes a time in your life where you have to really take like adult But I still feel like if you know in the back of your mind, you should still be like, well, I, I went through bankruptcy three times. Like right. it's nice to flex, but it's just, but you could still flex with like a four bedroom one. Right, exactly. Yeah, no, exactly. Like you said, you know, before this call, Ronnie and I were talking, you know, you would have been perfectly fine, you know, in a studio apartment, you know. In a or a condo building. that's minimalistic and chic. You know, on the Upper West Side, you know. Still right. Still got your capes out with the doorman and, you know. Still right. Living that life. Uh, so here's where the money gets. Speaking messed. of the capes, though, they're also saying that he's gotten so big that he no longer can wear actual capes. He's actually wearing sheets, actual sheets, just throwing sheets over him. I'm just like, ooh. Right. Well, so nobody's going through making, it. Nobody's making nothing. You know, he's not on the master yeah. book anymore. So, you know, you exactly. can call up Nicholas Gesquier and be like, darling, can you do this cape for me in brocade? You Girl, know. he better go to the fabric store. <laughs> so here's Just where the money is get messy. According to Andre Leon Talley, he has paid over 955K into the house in terms of rent, upkeep. He apparently, you know, got a new roof, got a new boiler, the landscaping I had mentioned, even paying $10,000 to trim down the trees. Yeah, see, that's too much money to be wasting. Like, fuck landscaping. Like, no. Right. Well, <laughs> trees are expensive. I mean, my friend who owns a big property in Modesto, who's gay, paid $7,000 for his trim trees to be trimmed down. I just don't down. feel like, yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I just feel like, to be honest with you, I just feel like the, like a real, like fashion lifestyles mm -hmm. lend themselves better to like 
chic condos, not necessarily like estates and shit. Like, I just feel like it lends itself better to like a condo. Ultimately, or he wanted to kind of be somewhere that reminded him of North Carolina, his upbringing. I guess. You know, it's like kind of like, you know, I, I do this too. You know, I'll go to Modesto, I'll go to Central Valley, I'll go to Sacramento, I'll go somewhere cheaper to live. And I fall in love with this thing for sale. And then, you know, you actually think of the reality of it be like, how are you going to get here every day? What are you going to do for work? But you fall in love with the real estate fantasy. You fall in love with the Zillow fantasy. I mean, yeah, I guess. But I just, I don't know, there's something that's just more chic of having being in a big condo and there's well, a doorman. Like that's to me, that's even more chic. Yeah, but than, you know, it, it, I don't know, it's just different. Um, you know, you're on the younger side. So it's like, you want to be in the city. You want to be into it. You know, it was true. Probably, it was probably, I am on the young easier, side, but it was probably easier for her to be out there at her weight, honestly. You know, to that is true that, too. You are right about house that. And, you know, but I just- shit, thought, I mean, the house was bought when he was younger. Yeah. Well, actually, no, not really. I, um, He's 71. Not to go off on too much of a tangent, but I just got done watching that Thousand Pound Sisters on TLC. Oh, <laughs> Lord. Andre need to watch that show. That's what he need to do. So anyhow, let's get back on topic. So Andre has claimed- Well, I mean, he's also he's also older too. So yeah. it's just like, it is it is what it is. But yeah, no, it is it is what it is at that point. But it's just like, I don't know. Like, I mean, I get it. I get it. I guess the, it is nice to have like retreat somewhere nice, but it's just like, I just am surprised he never- I don't know, like, I just be like, I just pictured him to more so live in a condo or somewhere chic mm-hmm. like that. I didn't ex- necessarily picture him in some, like, off in the outskirts house. Right. Well, as I mentioned, you know, he had that 90, uh, 955K put into the home. In 2004, the couple said that he made $120,000 security deposit on the house, which Andre considered a down payment and a sort of pay to own scenario which would act more like a mortgage so Macklin mm-hmm. was content that ALT owns 515k on the house still just over whatever type of agreement they made which is very cloudy he says that is the amount that he owes so um what this whole dynamic and we should talk is- about we should also talk about what he was probably making or made Right. Uh, While he was working. In his heyday. I mean, when he was creative director of Vogue back then, I would speculate 350K. Yeah, back then. Between 200, 350. And also, you have to remember that that was 30 years ago at this point. Exactly. That was a lot of money. I mean, Mm -hmm. that would be more akin to about a half million today. Mm -hmm. Um, So, but this is- And Shane was saying it's also probably because she spent a lot on clothes, but I was thinking like, I really feel like she got most of the shit for free. I think a lot of it, you know, he talks a lot about Carl gifting him. In yeah, his, like Carl was always we, gifting him something. We, Ronald and I were watching, you know, a, a sort of interview with him one time on YouTube where he's at um, Charvet in Paris. And, you know, he's having stuff custom made and specialty mm-hmm. and, you know, all of that stuff. And while I'm sure it was maybe discounted, I don't think it was completely gratis. So. Um, I know, but do you think he spent that much to, that it I, took away from his rent I, money? I think he probably like had a, a, a you I know. mean, for goodness sakes, it was, it's not like he was making pants or anything. It was really just those damn fucking draped capes. Right. I think a lot of those were provided by the brands, but I think the sort of the base wear, the white shirt, the black pants, you know, those. Yeah, and those aren't expensive items. like that, like that. Yeah, those special items, I think, were, you know, made by Oscar de la Renta, Nicolas Gasquier, that type of thing. Um, but, you know, that's where this all gets cloudy because the gifts, the favors, the influence yeah. are a currency of exchange, you know. Yeah, and- but it is obvious that he did rely a lot on favors, whether yeah, it be exactly. clothes or whatever. And that's that really, is really that we know for sure. because, you know, there's a quid pro quo, you know, for that. For example, like, what you know, back when I was more doing the celebrity styling thing, you know, I, you know, went to a watch event. Um, I pulled one of the watches from one of my girls. She wore it on the red carpet. Boom, I got a watch the next day. So thank you. You know, so, of course, I accepted it lovingly and graciously that, you know, there's no signature on anything there's no this it's just sent to you by messenger here thank you you know with a note or some flowers so and in a world where you know assistant market editors are making twenty five thousand dollars still to this day at Condé Nast um you know those kind of gifts are graciously accepted because that's why the only reason you would take such a low paid yeah. job and it's also the reason why there's such a lack of diversity at a company like Condé Nast because who could afford to live off those salaries if you're not living off a trust fund or some type of family money or the boyfriend or the husband right 
you know, accept. But it. I will say so. it, it's unfortunate that he has to go through this to Ed's because one possible, I would say the most, not even would say it's factual, like he's the most or was and is the most influential black person in fashion like mm -hmm. there's and no one else especially for his age for his day and age you know the late 70s early 80s well know, he's a like, legend for black people in fashion he's a legend like i when i was learning about fashion like it was him like there was no one else like right. he's the only representation so yes. it's fucked but up that he has to go through this i think you know in this kind of interest-free lone world i mean there's others but he was the one yeah where you know Anna Wintour's house for example was an interest-free loan from Cy Newhouse where she just has to pay back the loan and no interest on it as many editor-in-chiefs of Connie Nast publications in its heyday did um you know things get very cloudy and you really have to draw a line between this is my financial reality and this yeah. is what I do for a living I know and, I just hate seeing him go through this because like I said he's like literally an, a legend right but I think at the he's from another generation in when and when i'm saying that you know he's from that diana veerland you know met you know met wing you know vogue heyday you know where there were no budgets for these shoots you know everything their whole lives were expensive so their entire check was paid yeah. and that doesn't really exist anymore and i do think it's sad i agree with you that he never really seemed to break out of that you know and live because it, it, this whole situation almost kind of like it, I don't want to say it tarnishes his legacy, but it's just kind of, it just, it doesn't look good. You know what I mean? And he, you know, we know he wrote that tell-all book, which, you know, we've talked about on another episode. And, you know, he basically had to do that for cash. And, you know, we have talked privately, you know, what does he do from this point? Where does he go? Well, no shade. What he could do now is start spilling teas. He spilled Starts a lot already. I don't think he got much more. <laughs> Well, he could start like he maybe make a podcast where he does like, right. like tells a story, a different story each day, and breaks down some tea right. that we just never heard about. Like, right. and then like no shade, like start low key putting Anna on blast about some shit she said. Right, I think he said <laughs> start a lot being about messy. Anna. The damage huh? is done with Anna, so I mean, I think it's I know they might as well. So just start being messy. People will be like, "Ooh, that's in like," right? But you know, <laughs> and let's like we said, you know, he's a man of a certain age. Um, you know, he's had a lot of health issues for him to be a value in today's digital world. Um, I, I don't know what that looks like. I really don't. So I, I don't. That's know. what I'm saying. The only yeah. thing would be like tapping into podcasts and start spilling tea. Mm -hmm. Might as well. So I don't know why he hasn't done it. You know, he was doing that Vogue podcast, which was pretty successful. So, but um they're saying that all of this, all these things we've talked about, all this back and forth may even go to trial. And that is going to be, you know, a spectacle of all. I thought, it, no, I think it, it is. I thought it is going oh, it to trial. It is going to trial. So, well, you know, with things we are basically I thought, going to trial, you can still settle before it goes to oh, trial. Because okay. it's well, yeah. very expensive to have a trial. It's very expensive to sue in general. True. And it's very expensive to have a trial. So, a lot but I mean, I know the lawyer was saying, his lawyer was like, yeah. basically like he didn't do nothing wrong. And the other thing is when there's a trial, a lot of dirty laundry is going to be aired. So it would probably be in Andre's favor to settle and just vacate. Well, what dirty laundry do you think he has? Oh, that piece in the New York Times today had a lot of stuff I did not know. I did not know about the bankruptcies. I did not know about this wild overspending. And I, there's probably a lot more, you know? So um, that's, you know, bad finances that he probably doesn't want out in the court of public opinion. <laughs> I mean, it's already, I mean, now we already know about the, like, getting kicked out of your home for not having enough money is already bad enough. So it's just like, if we know about more money things, yeah. it's like, whatever. So moral of the story, get your money straight. <laughs> yes. Do not rely on others to take care of you. Make but I mean, it, I, well, I mean, I shouldn't say it was his only option, but if he was going to insist on having that home, it was his only option. Right. But, but exactly like you he said, could have lived they at somewhere else. that point in 04, they could have put him, you know, in a nice five hundred thousand dollar condo. Yeah. Upper West Side, doorman building, you know, just you rode the tech or put you know, get in the Connie Nast town car, go to four times square where it was at the time and you know, live his life. So 
Um, it's, it's like you said, it's just sad. It's just sad. So, I mean, I'd rather remember him for like the greatness, the great um, columns that he wrote, the great sittings that he did, all of the, you know, there's no really grand editors, stars. Exactly. He was well, with. and there's no grand Black editors like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, no, exactly. And so, and yes, there are. I mean, more- there are, but like, Right. He's the most legendary. I, I get what you're saying, but there are many more uh, POC within the editor and chief. Oh yeah, no, it's, there's definitely more. There's definitely more POC no, editors okay. now. But I'm just saying, it's, like, it's he had the most. He was on. He was essentially like the black Anna Wintour. Yeah. And this, it, it, it's it's not. He's not as fat. They're not as fabulous. They're not as grand. They're not as large. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. a job now. You know, and it always was a job at the end of the day, but now it really is just a job. You know? Yeah. So, so that's why, like, he's an icon. Honestly, he's on. He's a black icon. So, and it being Black History Month, <laughs> for this to happen during Black History Month is even more unfortunate. <laughs> Very sad. Well, what are your final thoughts? But yes, it is sad, but he will still always be a legend and he will always have a legacy because so, we definitely can't deny what he's done for fashion. Yeah, you know what? And I and think, the you know, even if he doesn't want to go the tawdry route with the podcast, like you said, I mean, he's, he's so... Um, has yeah, so he's talented. He's historical knowledge in terms of fashion history. So I, I would hope that he would find some way to get that out in a new medium, like a podcast. And mm-hmm. so I have probably so many great stories from the 80s and 90s, from the shoots and the subjects. And, you know, there's a way to dance around it where you can kind of tell a story and not necessarily name the name of the person or. Yeah, but it would need to be a podcast where like, because I mean, again, like, I guess it seems like health is an issue. So it needs to be something he can do from home. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely listen. We would definitely do a review. Yeah, a review but I, um, I think it would be good to do kind of, or even just like interviews, maybe start doing like interviews. Yeah, I, mean, I love that Naomi Campbell interview series mm-hmm. on YouTube. It's fantastic. And just the connection she has with her subjects, as well as the stories are just, I'm so glad it's yeah. out there because these stories would never be told unless she was telling it from her point of view. But either way, he needs to get rich quick scheme, whatever the fuck it is he needs to have one. <laughs> poor thing because I mean I just I just don't I just right. don't want him kicked out right it's um you know it really is a really on the street honey respecting your elders type thing it's it's very sad yeah it's very respecting your elders. it's just like don't kick that old man out right so in his old, and don't kick that black old man out in his Ugg boots leave him alone right I hope you know he has enough but what I will say is like but what I will say though is like okay well where are your homegirls at like Naomi where you at did you start a GoFundMe for him what's tea like right. where are you, where are all your rich celebrity friends all those rich models that you help put on help put on right where are they at well that's the thing you know and a lot of you know what we're talking about the line between professionalism and friendship is very cloudy and some people just don't want to get involved in all that you know it's like we were you know you were an editor at a magazine and I was a model for you. And that's kind of where it ends, you know? But I mean, like some of them were friends, like he's actually friends with Naomi, isn't he? Uh, You know, now that I think about it, you know, Naomi still could probably just buy a condo for him in cash and, you know, call it a day. So let him live out his days. (laughs) Yeah. Like she could afford it. No. She could get him, she could buy him a, she could buy him a, well, I was more so thinking like help him with the lawsuit though, but. Oh no. (laughs) she, She definitely would not be involved in that. No way. With with the money part of it, but um, but yeah, you. I guess that's too much for her to spare. But she could definitely buy him a condo, can't she? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean that's another thing. These legal bills are not cheap. You know, it's like why are you put? You know, just vacate the property, use what savings you have to, you know, go buy something else, and you know, don't get out of this mess. You know that you put yourself in. So, girl, is he gonna have to um put his tail between his legs and go uh, talk to Anna again and crash on her couch? I'm I was kidding. thinking about that because, you know, if um, I'm just kidding. You know, he did write by Anna and didn't write that tell-all book, you know, she probably would have helped uh, fish some money up for him. She actually might, you're right, huh? Maybe she would have. So, but not now, not now. Yeah, no, now they're done. Mm-hmm. So. so that's what I'm saying. So now who are his other rich celebrity friends who could help him? Right, but it's kind of like Trump. It's like, don't burn all your bridges. So you, you don't know when you're going to need a friend in this life, so... <laughs> Well, when he started, um, well, maybe when he was spilling that tea about Anna, maybe he thought it would generate some type of like attention and get more, bring money in. Maybe and that's ten, what he did I mean, it, with. that's the thing. It generated attention and it brought money in, but that money is limited. That money's going to run out in a year or two. Yeah, you know, it's not going to bring him a long, uh, long tenured job at this point. You know, that yeah, he live off the rest of his life for. But that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying to the young gays watching this program, or just anybody watching this program. 
save your money, watch your money, invest your money. Don't go on that Instagram vacation, buy a savings bond instead. And it was different back then to do a um, gentleman's agreement, but still right. get and some also, shit in paper. It was just different back then where they, you know, the editors worked till they were 80s. They practically died, you know, in the chair with a pa- piece of paper and a red line, you know, doing mm-hmm. old school copy notations. But, right. you know, that that no longer exists anymore. So That's true. All well, right. Let's just say... It, let's just say it'll work out for him mm-hmm. somehow because <laughs> I really would not like to see him homeless. <laughs> uh, no shit. Space to wash, space to wash. And I'll tell you this. <laughs> but I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm like, yeah, no, but I, it would be nice if they could settle out of court yeah. and just figure something out. But I mean, I don't know what's going to happen, but like someone, I just, ideally it would be nice if someone could just pay the rest of it off and he could stay there because they're just, to have him move and doing all that, it's just like, let him just stay there. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this, if there is a trial, we will be coming back with another episode with the play by play. I will probably fly to yes. work and somehow get myself into the world and be like, <laughs> I don't know, that would be probably, probably learn how to stenographer. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be brilliant. I'll be like yeah. Elaine Matthews when she was a stenographer <laughs> on Drag Race for the court, Jersey Justice. <laughs> right. But yeah, but that's all the tea for Andre Leon Talley. Unfortunately, that's what's going on with him. For now, for now. For so now. But yeah, but for now. But that's do not the... think this is the end of the story. <laughs> oh yeah, it's not the end for sure though, but that's what it is so far. And it's sad, but let's see what happens. Okay, all right. We'll be back with fashion updates soon. What yes. do you do, Ronald? But in the meantime, everyone subscribe below so that we're not homeless like Andre. No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're so wrong. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> Subscribe down below, you guys. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.